uh, Chancellor George Pappas, <coughs> Vice Chancellor Peter Dawkins, uh, distinguished guests, uh, alumni of uh, Victoria University, and ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> This is a, uh, an emotional situation. I have <coughs> my uh, mentor from <coughs> Monash University of 1969, now Professor Bill Melbourne, sitting in the front, who inspired me to, in many ways, go higher, further, and faster in, in terms of life's ambitions. I remember sitting so we were talking about way back in 1968, before most of you people were born. 1967, 1968. Monash University was windswept and barren, and very new, very young. And I came across this man in the front row here, and, <coughs> and uh, I heard him speak in terms of the, uh, the world of aerodynamics and, aer and aeronautical engineering. And uh, that was the start of a journey which has continued. So I graduated with a um, honours degree from Monash University in, in, from, uh, in mechanical engineering. And uh, through Bill Melbourne, Dr. Bill Melbourne, Professor Bill Melbourne, uh, I was able to get a, um, a uh, scholarship at MIT in Boston, which is considered probably one of the best engineering schools in the world. And uh, I married my darling Raza, and we went across to the United States and also sailed with my first America's Cup boat with a man called Sir Frank Packer. And Sir Frank was the, to put it in context, Sir Frank was the middleweight boxing champion of Australia during the Great Depression to give you an idea of the type of people we're dealing with here. A tough bastard. <laughs> and I was young, I was one of the youngest people ever to sail on America's Cup boat. This is way back in 1970 in Newport, Rhode Island, when we just got demolished by the United States of America. Wide-eyed and bushy-tailed, but that was a start. And went on to MIT in Boston, and uh, that was an amazing journey through to see the US education system in full swing. And we came back to Australia and then started a, a long journey, you might say, in terms of endeavoring to win this event called the America's Cup, which again, most of the graduates here would, would not have been born. We're talking about now, 1983, 30 years ago, as of two weeks ago. We had a wonderful, wonderful celebration in, uh, in Sydney with Mr. Bob Hawke, former Prime Minister of this great country, and Alan Bond, the uh, syndicate chairman, and myself and the sounding team, and we reminisced. It was a wonderful sense of reflection that we had in beating the United States of America where the United States had retained, successfully defended the, this event called the America's Cup for over 132 years of continuous competition. So the America's Cup, they held it bef before the US Civil War, to put it in context. And the Americans through the New York Yacht Club had successfully defended over the, all of those years. And it's something that the Confederation of Australian Sporters, as uh, was just outlined, voted the uh, Australia Two performance as the finest team performance in 200, in 200 years of Australian sport. So it's something that we're very proud of. We created the Boxing Kangaroo, our battle flag to take us to war in many ways. Red gloves for aggression, pumped up chest for the pride of a nation. Next time you see a Boxing Kangaroo flag flown from a used car sales yard, you'll understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> Passion, wonderful thing. And our battle hymn was Men at Work Down Under, which is now played whenever we win on the international scene, it would appear. It's part of the national anthem in many ways. Our, de facto national anthem. So that was a long time ago, and uh, fast forward, it's been, uh, it's, it's been quite a journey. And uh, here I am now, and uh, now, as of five weeks ago, anointed as president of Swimming Australia. We're now talking about the green and the gold of national importance. In fact, that's what I told my, my wife, Raza, and she bought it <laughs> when I was asked to consider being involved. 
And uh, you, of course, uh, we're now talking about something that is, is really the heart and soul of this country on the international scene, swimming, and particularly at the Olympic level. So we have a dream with this. We have a vision. The vision is one to be the pride of the nation by the Rio Olympics in 2016. We're talking about the sport of swimming here. And in addition to that, we want to be one, number one swimming nation in the world by the Tokyo Olympics 2020. From the podium at both the Olympic podium and the Paralympic podium through to grassroots. Now that's a huge, huge ambition for a country of 23 million people because we're now talking about taking on the United States of America, we're talking about taking on China and the, all the countries around the world. It is a massive ambition. And most people would say, well, you, you're nuts. But indeed, I guess most people said we're nuts if we're trying to win this thing called the America's Cup all those years ago. It can be done if there's focus. So I'll briefly tell you how the, the groundwork in which we're laying here. There's four links in a chain and this has come from the world of hard knocks as a result of a lot of losing in the world of international competition. But four links in a chain that have to be world class if we're able to play the game at international level. The first thing is our administration has to be world class. And we're not just talking about moving paper or computers from one location to another. We're talking about administration all the way through, from top through to the bottom. Our ability to service our partners, our ability to, to encourage our people. It's a whole communication strategy in its own right. That's the first link. The second link that has to be world class is the world of technology. And of course, Victoria University is a leading proponent in terms of technology on the world stage within the world of sport. And technology is all pervasive. We're talking about education at the highest level. We're talking about knowledge at the highest level and indeed pushing the boundaries beyond what we think is possible now. One of the beautiful things I see when I look at the Olympic movement, which tends to be the cutting edge of human endeavor in so many ways, you look at any four year period of the Olympics and you get improvements in performance. But interesting enough, you take any 20 year slice of the Olympic movement over 140 years of competition and you have a quantum leap in performance in every discipline whether it's throwing a javelin, where it's a 100 metre sprint, where it's a 50 metre sprint in terms of freestyle or backstroke, doesn't matter, or sailing a boat, you have a quantum leap in performance. So it's not rocket science to say that in 20 years' time, the world of sport and in fact the world of commerce will be so different to what it is now. We know that. History doesn't lie in this regard. So our, our technology is a key driver to this. So in 20 years' time, Swimming Australia will be very, very different. We know that. So the question is, how do we get there faster than anyone else in the world? And that's part and parcel of our mantra, to take our blinkers off as human beings and to move forward at a faster rate than anyone else in the world. And that requires young, creative people, people just like we've seen here who have graduated in this beautiful afternoon. So technology has to be world class in everything we do. The third link, of course, is the, are the athletes, the men and women. And we're talking about not only as individuals, but as teams, as an over-unified team, which we didn't see so much at the London Olympics, if you, if you followed it. And then fourthly, the coaching. The coaching has to be world class. And we're talking about now coaching of the coaches. And again, Victoria University is at the forefront in many, many thought processes in, in this whole push of how does one go further, higher, and faster, which is the Olympic dream in so many ways. So, and the glue that holds this together, we're now talking about a, a high performance organization that's, will, that's able to play the game internationally, not locally, but internationally, to be the best of the best. The glue is what we call cultural values, very, very simple. And those cultural values are, are integrity and trust and values of honesty and clarity of communication. So simple but so powerful. And indeed for us Australians of course to have fun. We've got to enjoy ourselves because if we're talking about the best of the best we're talking about literally working 7 by 24 until the job is done. 
So we have to have a cultural environment where it's enjoyable to be involved. So that's part of our dream with what this thing is called Swimming Australia. And I look out and I see so much potential in this audience here, these young, you young people in terms of where you're following, the, the opportunity that you, are, that you have yourself. It's all available in front of you, just like myself when I graduated all those years ago. I'd like to just leave you with some thoughts about leadership because really what you have here is, as individuals, is you have leadership over your own careers as you've graduated here today. And you have the ability to lead teams to create wonderful opportunities for mankind in many ways, no matter what area of activity that you so choose. These are some thoughts. These are some thoughts on leaders. Great leaders are both dream builders and team builders. Dream builders, the ability to dream on what could it be. Secondly, leaders create a vision. They communicate that vision. They constantly reinforce that vision. They inspire and they do. Leaders create winning teams around their vision. They encourage, they empower. They develop their people. They demand innovation, creativity and boldness. Just think about that in terms of your own careers and where you're going as individuals. Leaders provide purpose, strategy, direction, and alignment. Alignment. How do we get one plus one equals three? How do you get the intellectual property within this room to be aligned? And if indeed that is, then anything is possible. I've seen it many, many times myself. Leaders anticipate change, and when it happens, they adapt, because this world is changing into the internet. The internet changes everything. I was told that in 1995 when we launched the company in Silicon Valley and we took, we took it onto NASDAQ and we floated it. It was a joint venture with NBC in America, a company called Quokka Sports. And the, what we learned from the venture capital world, Sandhurst Road, in the American terminology, a one mile strip in Sandhurst Road, a venture capitalist, controlled 60% of the world's venture capital funding. 60% of the world's venture capital funding is, comes from within a one mile strip of Sandhurst Road in Silicon Valley. Unbelievable intellectual property within that world in, in, outside of San Francisco. And the internet changes everything. A guy called Neil Weintraut told me that, a venture capitalist. And how true is that? The communication around the world has changed so dramatically over such a short period of time. Leaders, they celebrate their team's milestones and their successes. And leaders have high emotional intelligence. I was really interested in terms of the various graduates here, how different people had a different senses of self-confidence and emotional intelligence, the ability to communicate and to relate to other people. They say that 70% of, of communication is body language, not what you say, but how you say it. And that's part of leadership, if indeed you're to be able to get one plus one equals three. Leaders operate with a very strong set of values of trust and integrity, honesty, transparency, and humility. And the, the culture within these teams is extremely strong. People want to be involved in a winning team created by world-class leadership. And leaders love what they do. They're passionate people. And one thing that my mum and dad instilled in myself and my brother is to find your passion in life and follow that. It's amazing. If you indeed get onto your journey as individuals, as you strike out now, and you continue with the road of, of education and knowledge, which is all part and parcel of the journey of life, you find a passionate area that you love, then you can become anything you wish. And that's so tr how so true is that? So part of it is to walk in the talk and find out what you really want to do with your life, because you've just started here. And leaders, they love what they do. They are passionate people. And, and finally, leaders never give up. Thank you very much.